ಸ್ಥಾಪಕಾಯ ಚ ಧರ್ಮ ಸರ್ವಧರ್ಮಸ್ವೇ ಅವತಾರವರಿಷ್ಠಾಯ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯತೆ ನಮಃ ಟಿಲ್ ನೌ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬೀನ್ ಹಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಎ ವಂಡರ್ಫುಲ್ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ ಆನ್ ದಿ ನೆಸೆಸಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ವರ್ಷಿಪಿಂಗ್ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ by our swami ashutosh anand ji and he has pointed out the whole significance of a subject in three points and all of us have been enjoying it naturally on such occasion like this when we celebrate the jayanti we have two lectures not only by two lecturers but in two different languages it has become a tradition therefore he spoke in tamil so i have to speak in english when we read sri ramakrishna's gospel the amuda murigal it is the translation from bengali where you know the original language of sri ramakrishna is recorded sri ramakrishna during his last 6 years 1980 to 80 81 to 85 or 80 to 85 6 years 5 1/2 years he met so many varieties of people and people with dif- different difficulties different questions to ask and he gi- replied all of them and everyone went satisfied and that treasure has been preserved for us in his uh, bengali language in what is called as katha amrita it is the nectar of his words so it is translated into english as the gospel of sri ram krishna so when you read gospel of sri ram krishna the teachings of sri ram krishna he again and again says that the goal of our life is realization of god every third page every fourth page if you turn he himself asked the question what is the goal of our life he may be professor he may be a student or he may be a somebody else having some other profession a businessman so he will ask the question what do you think is the goal of our life it is a very peculiar question we never ask anyone i have never seen ordinary people asking what is the goal of your life what do you what career do you want i have seen as if you know making a career is the goal of life sri ram krishna did not mean making a career he always you ask what is the goal of your life career is only for a particular period career we build up from 28th year to 55th year 28th year we get into service 58th year we are retired even if you want to work they will not give so if you ask for superannuation a huge sub- tradition is there or uh, formalities are there then 50 people will say no don't give superannuation that one year extension you cannot get so difficult so where is your career starts at 20 ends in 58 that cannot be the goal of life after 58 is so we are going to live another 42 years what will we do if the whole thing has ended there so swami ranganathananji used to say the career is only function the goal is for the whole personality of man personality and function are two different things the goal of life remains till we pass away from this world to a higher world until then we have something to achieve as shashutoshanji was telling konja sadhikana edavadu sadhana cheyana munnerana so this going forward in life is the goal and for that sri ramakrishna tells us this for all your life there is something which you go, go on achieving more and more there is something more to achieve and for whatever little you achieve in that one you will get the maximum joy maximum satisfaction maximum fulfillment that is the goal of life goal of life is that a goal which gives you satisfaction in the end fulfillment in the end this this should come to us 
whenever we do something that is to be done that is allotted to us that is my duty that i consider as correct you get a satisfaction fulfillment the life must give that give that to us when we go through the whole life after going through different phases of our life of youth of middle age of retirement post retirement period whatever we do if we feel that we are doing the right thing when we are doing when we reach the end of life i must look back into my life and say i am satisfied i am fulfilled i have nothing to worry i have done what i was expected to do in my life if we can say this that is a fulfilled life there is comes the real success of life sri ram krishna wants us to have a goal for that that goal sri ram krishna himself gives us god realization self realization to realize that we are spiritual beings part and being part and parcel of god we are the children of this king of this emperor of this whole universe we are running to get jobs or some positions and fame to the small petty people in this world sri ram krishna says but you are the children of the emperor of the world what position in this world can can be equal to that so that's why we never get satisfied at all because inside as we know intuitively that we are the children of the emperor of this world god himself we are part and parcel of god we don't know that we have forgotten therefore we are running behind name fame position promotion and all these things you know entices they attract us because we don't know our own real nature sri ramakrishna says when once you know that you are the spiritual being you are the part and parcel of god you are the dear child of god himself god is your father and mother he is there always behind you you are on his lap you have forgotten it know that this is the knowledge what sri ramakrishna calls as god realization and the nature of god he describes is really a wonderful thing it is said in the upanishads to god is of the nature of satya jnana anantam brahma he is infinite existence infinite knowledge and infinite joy it is said there so sri ram krishna says this is the god we have to identify ourselves with we must feel that we are the children of a father or we are the children of a mother who are themselves infinite joy therefore infinite joy joyful mother can give birth to a child which is also a full of infinite joy there is no end to the joy of the child similarly infinite knowledge is there in the mother and father it comes directly to the child and infinite life they have they never die they never take birth there is no end they are eternally there so we are also we will be eternally there that means the realization that we are not born the other day we are not going to die the an- after another 100 years and in between you know, we suffer here we don't have joy to enjoy all this is madness real nature of us is there can be no joylessness in my life i am full of joy infinite joy i there can be no powerlessness in me because i have got infinite knowledge and infinite power in me and there can be no fear of anything especially the fear of death can never come to me because there is no death for the infinite being the god so i am that so to realize this is the real knowledge so sri ram krishna says when you and when he says you realize god he only says that you all try to know this your real nature that do you you never feel that i have become old i am going to die your body has become old it will die you are going to be eternally young eternally young even as god is you never feel oh i have all miseries in my life when will this life go away no don't get into frustration because there is no joylessness joy is there filled inside you you are unaware of it we have to become aware of it so sri ram krishna again and again stresses 
the necessity of religion for us religion is the path which leads us to this self realization this god realization if we follow religion we come to know that we are the children of god so all that thing that comes and goes it should not worry at all suppose i have got 10 crores of rupees put in my bank up by my father and then when when i am working in this world so i lose to have some 10 lakhs i gain 5 lakhs it does not affect me at all 10 crores are lying there 5 lakhs are some what is this when the profit comes you are not joyful at all well put it into the bank and that uh, along with the 10 crores let this 5 lakhs also go you may lose another day another 5 lakhs that is already 10 crores are there nothing is let it go you don't bother whatever comes the joy comes it does not elate you whatever misery comes to you it is not going to worry you because you know you have behind you an infinite source much more than what we have lost or what we have gained nothing can be compared to that infinite joy of god infinite knowledge of god infinite life of god to which we are heirs we belong to him this sense of belonging that we are divine there is father and mother in god for us so he is always there protecting us even in this worldly life you if you remember this first of all we have faith in the person the guru tells us that you are all children of god it is the upanishad states seers that tell us we are all children of god if you just start believing in that one and then how to believe must belief must lead us to experience how does it lead to experience can all of us realize god we are at different levels some are uh, very intelligent some are very dull some are uh, sanyasis some are brahmacharis some are householders can all of us realize this god sri ramakrishna says the eligibility is there for every human being irrespective of his age is like color or caste or creed or his position of wealth or position or other social standing irrespective of all this every human being is eligible for this realization that he belongs to god so religion is for everyone everyone not only can realize god should realize god this is sri ram krishna teaching to us because he says as ashutoshana ji was telling sri ram krishna tells us you see we are running behind this world in the world we have got only two things to achieve one is the sense enjoyment second is the mental enjoyment of name and fame name and fame does not satisfy your trunk or ear but somehow people run behind name and fame people go and pay 10 10 lakhs of rupees to get a title dharma ratna what is this dharma what is it going to help you but 10 lakhs of rupees you have paid to an institution so they have given you know, this is dharma ratna i know a case very peculiar case a person who was running lots of poultries that means every day thousands of hens and cocks are being killed he is supplying everywhere he was given a title dharma ratna he paid money it happens but what did he gain he knows that he is he is the cause of the death of 10000 cocks or hens every day but he want to get a title see there is something subtle desire for name and fame this is one and the, the other one is sense enjoyments we are running behind these two sri ram krishna put the question it is not that there is no joy in senses it is not that there is no joy in uh, name and fame but how long will this last that is the question sri ram krishna all right you have got a dharma ratna you have got all the wealth in the world how long will it last will it come with you one story is there one saint was going in arabia he was going to visit mecca on the way he found a muslim kingdom a sheik was there sheik is the king sheik he was a very great tyrant this fellow was looting people by every type of taxation all the people were so much harassed they went to the saint sir you are anyway going to mecca mecca so why don't you give a little advice to our sheik every morning he brings out a taxation over us we are unable to bear so why don't you give an advice he said all right i'll give 
how did he give the advice he took a few stones from the ground put it into a cloth tied it into a knot and took that small bundle to the darbar of sheik so sheik is sitting in court so he went sir i am going to mecca i don't uh, want to carry this burden it is a small one so this one small bundle you please keep with you if i successfully do my trip to mecca and return i will collect this and go and suppose i don't return what i want is anyway you are going to die and you are going to heaven and i will also come to heaven there i will collect this you please bring it there immediately that king blushed shake blurted out what foolish thing you are telling i will i be able to carry this bundle to heaven will you not be able to carry then why are you taxing people so much so all that money how will you carry, carry it to the next world you are already old now you are going to leave this world then the knowledge dawned upon him all the wealth may be there how long you have to leave everything behind this is called anitya that's about bhagavad gita spoke about it anityam asukham lokam imam prapya bhajaswama that's what sri ramkrishna said it not that there is no sense enjoyment here not that there is no enjoyment in name and fame is there but anitya it is going to leave you so you are holding on to it one day per force you have to leave when the death comes and takes you away whole thing left behind and will something be carried and will be kept here for if you take next birth and come you have to start again from a b c d all this money you have left here it is not connected with you at all somebody else will be enjoying it so sri ram krishna touches on this point anityam asukham lokam imam prapya coming into this world if everything is temporary here such fleeting then what should we try for we should try for something that is permanent and that permanent is god so being in this world sri ram krishna says you hold on to god with one hand he is permanent so the other hand you give to the world do your duties when these duties are over when this world comes to an end world may go away but this this pillar that you are holding on to it is eternal so if this eight pillar is there in heaven this pillar is in brahma loka it pillar is there in brahma itself you are holding on to pillar so there is no question of leaving that you are with god sri ram krishna says live in this world having this goal of realizing god and this god is always should be with you the moment you forget him you get into fear we have seen little children so they are very happy when they when it is with, the, with their parents if it forgets the parents and moves out into the street and there one small crab is coming or some small insect is coming in print ha oh, ma 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 it just it's so full of fear suppose it is sitting on the lap of his father or mother and he sees even a snake he is not bothered at all amma irukala enak enna bayam so he is not bothered about even a snake but when he forgets father and mother even a small insect frightens him in this world we are frightened with things trials and tribulations in life because we forget that there is god behind us he is there so he is behind you he is going to give you all strength all power whatever you want he is going to give when we once realize this remember this we have great courage even with a faith like this you will have more courage whenever any frustration comes in your life oh what is this life let us put an end to it immediately he says why should i put an end to life so god is there behind he has brought this tribulation we have worked in very difficult circumstances in the tribal areas i don't know how many of you have the experience of living in the tribals so we have guru maharaj has been kind to give us that opportunity of working among the tribals for 20 years no people from this plains go there because it's so difficult to go and there we have to work among the tribal they don't have anything to offer to you so you have to fetch every money you have to spend upon them going here there begging getting getting some donation go to the government and get some donation so all this work we would be doing and there we would find 
every time this is the work of sri ram krishna this is the work of swami ji so they will certainly help we need not bother so whenever trials would come we would be completely in a sea there is nobody to help because the people who are giving you trouble are these tribals they don't understand your trouble and there is no other person to help you in a social uh, from a social point of view all are away in the plains plains people are not allowed to go into tri- tribal areas without special permits under that circumstances what sustained us this faith guru maharaj is there he is going to help us so when we have worked with them when we started small institution with a primary school now that primary school has grown into middle school high school higher secondary school in the tribal areas and that is considered the best school in the whole of northeast we got the president award and president uh, certificate for that one how did how did it happen how could we work there it is the faith that god is there behind you and the help would come from somewhere most unexpected but it has always come when once twice thrice we experienced it we lost all worry god is there guru maharaj's work it is swami ji's work they will carry on we carried on for 20 years and it was such a successful work whenever people go there they wonder rajiv gandhi went once to along along is on the border of china so we were, i have worked there for 13 years then rajiv gandhi came there with his wife sonia long back in uh, 1988 89 i left maybe 1988 he came so when he came there he was seeing there was nothing there no development no roads no city nothing whatsoever he doesn't have a good bakery to give him bread in the morning or biscuit in the morning he has no good dairy to give him a safe milk which he is used to take milk in the morning and he has no place where he can get good healthy vegetables so the deputy governor ran to our school our ashram sir you have got a garden please give this vegetable for rajiv gandhi you have got a good dairy please give milk for rajiv gandhi you have got a bakery you give some biscuits and bread we supplied it at that at that time he came to our institution so we, we told him we told the deputy commissioner he is coming here to see all the tribals so we want we have got a tribal hostel here 200 boys are, are there and 1600 boys and girls are there as day scholars he must come to our school then the deputy commissioner he said no 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 swami he is very busy no no busy or no busy he must come here so he must arrange for that and then he said all right only half an hour i'll give you all that you send him here and we will know we know he will not be able to he will not be leaving our institution in half an hour so they came when he when they arrived in the district headquarters of along as i said they could not get vegetables except from the ramkrishna mission they could not get bakery except from ramkrishna mission they could not get milk except from the dairy then they thought these people are so important here and that has reached rajiv gandhi's ears also and mar verse was to follow they are taking him to different uh, tribal celebrations tribal dances tribal dramas etc their theme is different their tunes are different their dances are different he is unable to understand anything and these other people are afraid to sit by his side and explain to him they came and requested me swami you are the only person you will sit by the side of rajiv gandhi for one and a half hour this cultural function will go, go on you know all these things much very better than us you please explain to him i had to do that duty also and when rajiv gandhi came first thing he saw was where there was no development nothing whatsoever of any progress anywhere when he came into our campus campus it looks like a, any institution in delhi or bombay or chennai he impressed him so much he came to us and he attended our prayers our children were all sitting they all sang so it on this side was rajiv gandhi and my left hand was sonia so we also sat we listened to the tribal prayers at the end of that prayer though the deputy commissioner was at a long distance so i told he did not want uh, rajiv gandhi to address because it was more than half an hour 
already prayer itself has taken more than half an hour though i told the children children i told them in hindi this here we have got the rajiv gandhi our prime minister he has traveled all over the world all over our country we would certainly you would all be anxious to hear about his experiences so uh, let us request him to address you immediately he stood up stood up and spoke very nicely he told the children you see when i came here this is like an oasis in a desert so you i cannot believe that an institution like this can be at this far off end of our country and then he told them you are all so lucky to be in this institution how i wish i had also studied in an institution like this he told that one later on i met him this time not rajiv gandhi sonia sonia is there just about 5 uh, years back we went in connection with the establishment of vivekananda university in belur but so i was in the probe committee so i we had to meet sonia so when i met sonia i told do you remember you came to along and then you heard the prayer suffer oh swami i remember very well she said and when the centenary of ramkrishna math was celebrated in delhi in the shri fort fort we held a big meeting at that time rajiv gandhi was there he was the prime minister the first thing he referred to was we were all about 40 50 swamis from different places it was the centenary of ramkrishna math shri ramkrishna established ramkrishna math in kasipur garden those of you who have read his life you know it so 8 1986 we celebrated all over the country and in delhi in the siri fort stadium we we celebrated it then rajiv gandhi came so we were all 40 swami sitting there and public were sitting behind us maybe 1000 people rajiv gandhi opened his speech he said we are grateful for the wonderful service this ramkrishna math has given to this country so we are grateful for them and specially i know what type of service they are giving i went to a forlorn land of along arunachal pradesh there i found like an oasis this swami is running a institution there and all the other party swamis were behind me they are all nudging me hey you have been referred and we have all been left out we are all working so in the planes in such big centers he said it impresses it impresses because it is the real work of swami ji so whenever problem used to come in tribal areas the only help and support and enthusiasm that that that, that we could get was from the faith that it is sri ram krishna's work it is swami ji's work it's a fantastic thing it is true that they are working and swami ji was specially for as ashutosh and already told you for the people for backward people he wanted them to be brought forward so we always used to remember this tribal work which is a, which is a backward area if we don't work here who else will work therefore swami ji has sent us it is his great blessing on us and 20 years i worked there i never felt one day also that this is a very difficult work let me leave and go only one day i felt once something happened and i was a little depressed i had already spent 3 years first 3 years in cherapunji in meghalaya so after 3 years that day somehow my mind got disturbed because i wanted to work in such a particular way there were the very great difficulty for proceeding in that way so all were discouraging me no 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 don't do that i said i must do it like that way <clears throat> so on that night i thought you see already i have spent 3 years in the difficult place let me leave this let me write to headquarters take a transfer and go away that was what i thought after 3 years of work there then on that e- evening came there there is no electricity i am talking of 1964 6566 66 in meghalaya no electricity we had a big hostel for ch- for boys we had big high school it and now became a higher secondary school so this hostel is like just came out of our campus we are on a hillock so i climbed down the hillock i was standing in the pitch dark there is no light even the starry light is not there so in that pitch dark i was looking all around 
and only a few lights were available to see. That was the kerosene lamps of our hostel boys. So they are all reading. All over darkness, darkness, darkness. Only a small pocket, a small hostel is there on the top of a hillock. I am standing below. In the darkness I see some 10 or 12 windows, just blinking lights. When I saw that, in this ocean of darkness, these 12 lamps are blinking. It is by the grace of Sri Ramakrishna that these lamps are here. So to keep these lights burning here centers, should I run away from this? No, I will not. Immediately my spirit went up. I stayed there for little more time, more than a year there. Then I came and people were very happy. They do not know this story. I am telling you this story. A few people only have told. Where did that idea come? That you are here working for me. You are keeping this light for the sake of the poor people. It is my mission. It comes from inside. Sri Ramakrishna inspires. This is what Sri Ramakrishna calls as having God, holding on to God when you work in the world. Such a difficult work. We never felt any difficulty. Similarly, it is not only I am not any special person. All of us are children of Sri Ramakrishna. Wherever you are, when you have this faith that whatever work you are doing, it is not you. It is he that is working through you. Certainly he will help you in all your difficulties. And you will cross this ocean of life so smilingly because he is there to hold and lead you up. So at the end of your life you will see when you have been thinking about God and living for yourself and trying to do something for the others also, you will always have his help. He will, he will all, you pray to him and he will always give you the strength from inside. You want ideas, he will give you ideas. You want physical strength, he will give you physical strength. You want to have physical health, he will give you physical health. You want money, he will give money. It is Swamiji's, Swamiji's expression. Money must come when I am doing the Lord's work. The money and men he will send because it is his work. All that we are doing here in this world is all his work. When we want to remember this, if you want money, he will send money. If you want men, he will send men. Every type of thing will come. So life becomes very easy. So this sight, when you look back on our life, we will have a sense of satisfaction, fulfillment. Oh, I have done God's work. He has been with me and beyond this life also he is going to lead me. He has lead me in the, led me in this life. Will he not hold my hand and lead me further also? Asat asato ma sadgamaya, tamaso ma jyotirgamaya. He is going to lead us to the higher and higher lights. So Sri Ramakrishna gave us this assurance that if we hold on to the pillar of God, remembering that God is behind us, behind everyone, so without forgetting Him, do your duties in the world. That will give the what we what He calls as detachment. Detachment, patrin mai. So detachment, how does it come? When you attach yourself to something else, you can detach yourself from here. How will you, how do you walk? You put the step forward, put all your weight on the forward step, then lift up the back one. So lap, lift, before lifting the back, you have, if you have not put your front foot forward and hold on to it, you will fall. So always we hold on to one thing before we detach ourselves from others. Love of God on one side will give detachment to the world. More the love, more is the detachment to the world, less the attachment to the world. We don't have to struggle for detachment, let us struggle for love of God. Jnana Vairagya Bhushanam Jnana and Vairagya, they go together. The more Jnana you have, I belong to God, God is there behind me, ah, what is this world? Naturally the detachment to the world comes. So detachment, must be preceded by love of God. We love Sri Ramakrishna. Oh Lord, I am doing your work. When you say, he will himself detach you from the world. Then don't bother what your brother says or what your mother says, what your boss says. Don't bother. You hear me. I will take care of all other things. All the things will go smooth because of the detachment from the world. More you detach, 
the world will run behind you that is the the yoga the effect of yoga the yoga works like that more you spur the thing in the world more it runs behind you so more you say i don't want the same thing will follow you people who say we don't want anything so everybody will go and offer them please take this one sir but we want we want when you say nobody will come to you this is the nature of the world so as yoga says similarly when we hold on to god we think we don't want the world but world is always behind you so oh, he is a good man he only wants to god he does not want the world let us go to him he is a good man so every morning there will be so much of crowd with you so whatever we want we, we will get it easily if you hold on to god and it is very easy to hold on to god how sri ramakrishna says simply have some values in your life swami ashutosh ranjee was telling you this values of life what we call as goodness what is this goodness except for a few values sri ramakrishna gave gave us so you be good in your life by having this few values have truth in your life have purity in your life have selflessness in your life have service to man thinking that god is there in every man do some service in fact we are doing service without realizing that we are serving god in man so sri ram krishna said remember that in your child god is there in your in laws god is there in your father and mother god is there in your students god is there in your patients god is there everywhere god is there whatever we do to them is not simply a help it is not a social service it is worship of god so sri ram krishna said shiva jnane jeeva seva serving the jeevas thinking that shiva himself is there in every one god is there bhagavad gita says ishvara sarva bhutanam hridesh arjuna tishtati in the heart of every bhuta every being god alone is sitting so if i give some cloth to a person who requires cloth so i am worshiping god by through the cloth if i give food to a person who is hungry i am worshiping god similarly if i give shelter to a person so he i am worshiping god by giving a shelter so service to god in man this was one of the great things sri ram krishna emphasized which is shown here in one of these things you see he is sitting there in devgar i want to serve this poor people you go to kashi i don't want kashi i want to worship god through them so this is what sri ram krishna showed us you are you become rich you become a highly spiritual person you have all visions of god you remember that god is always there with you that is not enough that knowledge must come back to the society in which you live you must serve the poor people thinking that same god is there inside them also service to god in man he said and faith and prayer and company of the holy what we are doing here all this from morning 5 o'clock to evening 9 o'clock since yesterday we are coming to the company of the holy where will you get a greater company than the company of the devotees of sri ram krishna devotees of sri ram krishna we ourselves don't know our great value swami vivekananda in one letter writes if tears flow out of the eyes of the devotees of sri ram krishna blood flows out from my eyes he says this is swami vivekananda's words if blood if the if tears come out the eyes of any devotee of sri ram krishna blood comes out to my eyes so much is the care that sri ram krishna swami ji and holy mother and the direct disciples have for all of us devotees so if we have devotion to sri ram krishna then all of us are holy so because we are being held supported behind by swami ji himself sri ram krishna himself so all of us we are 1500 people maybe 2000 people all of us are this is the company this is, a, this is a, something like a big ganga river here we have been hearing from morning till evening this satsang we are having we have been thinking about sri ram krishna about holy mother about spiritual life How, is it ever possible sitting in your house some 15 minutes of meditation is so difficult if you sit in the meditation immediately your cell will ring krang krang so you will have to get up 
If with some ten minutes of sadhana inside house is not possible, because of this holy company you have come over here, you have forgotten your houses. Three hours, four hours, you are here thinking about holy things. Holy things to think about half an hour is a big sadhana. Shanam api sajjana sangati reka bhavati bhavarnama tarane nuka shankaracharya sang. One second of so, so the company of the holy is enough to take you across this ocean of life. Four hours. That means how many hundreds and thousands of people we can go away. Not one. Thousands of people we can cross this ocean of life. So Sri Ramakrishna says, this company of the holy is required. And company of the holy, he has brought to us. Wherever we are, in Chennai, this is a cosmopolitan town. So this is not uh, mentioned anywhere that people should come and do tapasya here. Nobody did tapasya here except Swami Ramakrishna Nandaji. He belongs to this new age of Sri Ramakrishna. He has made Chennai into a tapasvi, tapas thala. Before that nobody did tapasya here. They just would go to Kashi, they would go to Himalayas, they would go to Rishikesh or Uttar Kashi or Gangotri. But now Sri Ramakrishna has established ashramas here. Satsanga is there. It is like a Naimisharanya where all the rishis are here and this Swami has come. Swami Sh- 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 Shiva Yoganandji came. He spoke like a Shukamuni. So here all Naimisharanya rishis sitting. His Tirthasthala has been created by the grace of Sri Ramakrishna. He has brought God, He has brought the company of the holy to our own doors. We don't have to go and search. This is the greatest gift that Sri Ramakrishna has given to us, bringing this, his centers. His centers mean the place where he is worshipped. He is ever shining there. He is inspiring everyone. Such centers are there at the doors of ours. Here we have one. And one step further, Swami Vivekananda said, you, may, you have not seen Sri Ramakrishna in physical body. Don't worry about it. Here is the Sangha. The centers of his Sangha is there. This Sangha was started by Sri Ramakrishna himself. So, wherever he is worshipped, wherever the branches of his Sangha are there, Sri Ramakrishna himself is in his Sangha. This is Swami Vivekananda's words. Go and visit the Swamis there. Go on to the temple there. Go and just sit in the library there. Go into the lib- dispensary and just move about. It is Sri Ramakrishna Sangha. Sri Ramakrishna is in his Sangha. Whoever serves his Sangha, serves Sri Ramakrishna himself. And he added also, whoever does evil to that Sangha, he is doing evil to Sri Ramakrishna himself. Be very careful. So, here he has given us a, a, a tangible form of Sri Ramakrishna. Sri Ramakrishna manifested in the form of his Sangha. I want to close. This Sangha brings me this idea. Swamiji's another one great statement. Swamiji always said, always a great revolution has followed when three things have come together in this world, in the history of the world. He used to quote the history of Buddhism, history of Christianity. Buddhism created a revolution in this world and two-thirds of the world became Buddhist within 300 years. How did it become? Buddha came. He was an incarnation. God himself came in the form of an incarnation. Buddha came. And then, along with him, he simplified the whole religion. Before Buddhism, the religion meant only offering goats, offering other animals, and perhaps offering uh, human beings also. Rituals and all sorts of things were considered as religion. Buddha came and simplified the whole religion. He said, live a good life, serve everyone, serve every being. So the service of man, service of animals with great love and living a pure life. This is all the life. He removed all the distinctions of caste and creed and color and gender. He made religion simple, as simple as possible. So he gave Buddhism the simplest religion. Buddha and he created this dharma, that is the new dharma, Buddhism. 
and then he knew after all he was a human being so buddha he knew that he would leave the body at when he is 80 years old he could not spread to the whole world his message so he left behind a group of missionaries this is called sangha he created a sangha so these are called the three ratna three jewels of buddhism buddham sharanam gachami dharmam sharanam gachami sangham sharanam gachami so this is the three oaths they take i follow buddha i follow his simple religion and i will be a missionary to take this message all over and the result was the avatara came a simple religion came and missionary group was formed to spread the religion within 300 years whole two thirds of the world was buddhist that is the first missionary religion afterwards came this christianity so christianity came almost after 500 years so 2000 year 2500 years back is buddhism 2000 is christianity so the from now it is 2000 and after 2500 years christianity came again the christ did the same christ was the incarnation of god he simplified the whole jewish religion jewish religion was full of sadducees and pharisees all this uh, people who were following all rituals there was no love he gave a religion of love serve the people and pray for everybody you live a simple life think not of the morrow the morrow shall take care of, the, of itself so he went on preaching the sermon on the mount made the religion very simple and then he formed a church also with peter he made peter said peter so you you will be the first pope so peter on on you i will base my church he said he started this church so the incarnation was not there then christianity simple religion was there then the church was there christianity spread half the world then now we have got the same three things together sri ram krishna has come the embodiment of all the vedic gods and goddesses all the goddesses christianity muslim all goddesses are there in sri ram krishna here is the greatest incarnation and he has brought this ramakrishna dharma ramakrishna dharma is simplest religion he this is the religion he gave be truthful be selfless serve god as god in man and pray to god and keep company of the holy this is sri ramakrishna's simplest dharma so ramakrishna dharma is there and ramakrishna sangha is there ramakrishna sangha committed to take his message to the ends of the earth with the faith that he is working we are not working so people who had with no experience like us we can go and work for 20 years in a tribal area now you are 100 times more qualified than us you will carry it much farther in the next 25 years there should be no corner in this world where sri ram krishna centers are not there it is going to happen this is going to happen i always have a vision i vis- i visualize i tell in uh, several several of my lectures it is already happening everywhere small small groups are coming in the name of sri ram krishna officially we have got 170 centers officially and there must be at least 1700 private centers which is not official they are all here and there we have only to coalesce we have only to come together and hold one another's hand it will be terrific force so i used to tell them funnily you see i must bring at in tamil nadu itself there are 200 centers are there if each center can bring 50 from 500 people 200 into 500 so 1 lakh people will be there 1 lakh people will go to this beach and we have got a common prayer kandana bhav bandana everywhere we sing 1 lakh people sitting on the barina beach we can sing kandana bhav bandana we can feel om rim ritam we can sing sarva mangal mangalye we can say prakritim parama we can say jai shri guru maharaj ji ki jai to repeat it will shake up the whole society in the whole of tamil nadu it is there already we have only to organize it any day you much more visionary than me one morning he may take this idea 
you may find a tremendous wave of sri ram krishna going all over it's already there it is taking shape and this is only the beginning swami vivekananda said my message is for the next 1500 years only 100 years are gone already we are in every corner of the world where we will go in 1400 years we may go to heaven also all the seven heavens are oh, we will go and preach there also in buddha's life it is there buddha was not only preaching here he was in the heavens he went to heavens to preach them also the gospel of buddha so this is the significance of sri ram krishna's advent he has given us a new life new vision new enthusiasm new energy we will work taking his name praying to him and following his simplest path he has shown may sri ram krishna may holy mother may swami ji inspire us all and take us along the right path so that all of us can lead a fulfilled life individually and bring fulfillment to the whole humanity as a whole jai shri guru maharaj ki